So as we've been talking about, the left has gone absolutely insane over a Florida bill that prevents essentially sexual indoctrination of young kids. That's all the bill does. The left wants to sexually indoctrinate young kids, so they're very unhappy about the bill. This is why they have nicknamed the bill the Don't Say Gay Bill. The idea being that we are attempting to stop kids from even learning about the presence of homosexual people in society or some such nonsense. One of the Sponsors of the bill, Chris Sprouls. He's a Republican legislator, attorney, and speaker of the Florida House of Representatives. Chris, thanks so much for joining the show. I really appreciate it. And it's great to be with you. Thanks for having me. So let's talk about what this bill actually does. Because according to the media, it basically bars children all the way up until they're in college from ever learning that gay people exist. But that is not what the bill does, however. Uh, it, not at all what it does. In fact, it's a total, total fabrication. The irony here, Ben, is the bill is four pages long and the president's press secretary clearly didn't bother to read it when she made her comments yesterday. The reality is all it does, all this bill does is make sure that parents are in charge when it comes to talking about complicated topics with their kids. You know, they can't hide the fact that they have a conversation with a kid at a, about a transition plan at their school from their from their parents, uh, which is something that was happening um, at a number of different places. And the part that's, contra quote, controversial, according to the, the president's press secretary, all it says is that in five and six year olds, they can't talk about transgender in classroom. That those are things that the parents are in charge of discussing with, with their children in those grades. We're talking about five and six year olds. This is limited to grades, you know, K through three. Um, these are first graders, these are kindergartners. Um, I think when people look at this bill, I, I have a hard time believing that the average parent would say, I wanna turn over that conversation to the school district rather than saying, I wanna have that conversation if it comes up with my kids in the way that I deem appropriate. We're speaking with Chris Sprouls. He is the Speaker of the Florida House of Representatives. So, so Chris, it really is amazing that nobody bothers to read this since the relevant portion that everybody seems very hot and bothered about is essentially about four sentences. Uh, it's very, very short. Um, but the, the basic idea here that they seem to be focusing in on is the idea of primary school, that it's not defined as K through three, that theoretically it could be K through five or K through 12. But it does say age appropriate, meaning that you could have discussions that are age appropriate beyond these sort of very young grades. So even if you think that it extends K through five or K through eight, age appropriate is the is the standard. You know, number one, I, I frankly wouldn't care if this bill said K through 12, because I don't think that these issues should be discussed in public schools, period. I think this is a question for for parents. And, and if they want other people teaching their kids about this stuff, they should get to pick you know who teaches that stuff. But if it's really through K through three, then there really should be no controversy. And, and frankly, the fact that there are people opposed to it and the idea that they're trying to turn this into some sort of attack on gay people is absurd. I mean, what the, the, contra, the converse position is you want six-year-olds being taught about gender ideology and sexual orientation by their public school teacher and parents have no rights over that. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to actually see who those people are who are willing to step to the podium here in the Florida House and say that they believe it is appropriate for a six-year-old to be talked about gender identity um, in their in their public school. I think I think that's going they're going to have a hard time finding that person to come and stand to the podium. The reality is, in Florida law through the Department of Education, primary school is defined as K through three. And the reason the bill does with K through three is because you know sex education happens. Um, at some level in fourth grade. But to your point about grades, you know, four through four through 12, it says age appropriate. And, and you know, it's funny about that, Ben, I know you're, you're a parent, I'm a parent, you know, I've got, a, I've got a five and six year old on, on Friday nights, we do movie night and I go and I, I look up the movies and I think, gosh, is this appropriate for me to show to my boys? And the reality is at some point, I'm going to let them watch that movie, but it might not be today because they're five and six and it might not be an appropriate topic for them to be watching a movie about. That is what parents do. What this bill says is that parents are in charge of making that decision. You know, Chris, one of the things that I find so hilarious and, and ridiculous about the resistance to this bill is they say, well, it's, it's so vague. It's so vague. How, how, da how dare it be so vague? Well, there, there's only one problem. When they talk about how the age appropriate section is vague, we don't know how it's going to be applied. The simple fact of the matter is that in California, in 2011, they passed the Fair Education Act which said that LGBTQ history had to be taught in a quote-unquote age-appropriate manner. So it's fine to mandate that kids learn about this stuff in an age-appropriate manner, but it's not okay to say that kids should not learn about this stuff unless it is age-appropriate. You'll have to explain to me the distinction. Yeah, I, I can't because it, it's a total fantasy. And the reality is, is that it goes back to nobody bothers to read this bill. And, and to your point about age-appropriate, I don't understand. that That is what every parent or guardian in America does when they raise their children is to say, I, I need to have them watch this thing or read this thing or, or talk to them about this. Is this the time? Is it age appropriate? 
And sometimes that age is based on just, you know, how old they are. It could be about their maturity level. The reality is I'm unwilling and the Florida House is unwilling to say, hey, some bureaucrat in government gets to make that decision rather than the parent. The parent should be the one who says this is age appropriate for my child or not. We're speaking with the Speaker of the Florida House of Representatives, Chris Sprouls. So, of course, Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg decided that he had to sound off. I mean, he rushed to the microphones very quickly because, of course, he is openly gay. And uh, he suggested that this bill would contribute to suicide attempts among LGBTQ youth. He provided no actual evidence of this. But this is always the go-to for the left, is if you don't allow us to indoctrinate small children into our preferred ideology with regard to sexual orientation and gender identity, you will harm the children. These children will be victimized. Now, last I checked, kids aren't allowed to be bullied in school at all. Kids are certainly not allowed to be harmed in school at all. And the basic notion that kids should not be indoctrinated by their teachers in a value system that some people believe and some people don't with regard to sexual identity and gender orientation, that 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 this is somehow going to lead to a wild uptick in youth in, in youth suicide. Like I'm going to need some see like one shred of evidence that that's the case. Yeah, you know, that's a really disgusting comment that was made. And, and I think Joe Harding, who is the bill sponsor, probably you know, responded to this the best. He posted a video on Twitter yesterday responding to the, the outcries from the White House and, and, and really said, you know, look, I'm a parent. We're, we're parents. We, we love our children. We want to make sure that every child in our school is safe, that they're not bullied. In fact, Ben, I would submit to you that there's not a state in America who has done more to protect kids in, the, in our state from being bullied than the state of Florida. In addition to making sure that they are protected physically by school guardians or sheriff's deputies, we've also made sure we put in a bullying scholarship where families, if their child is bullied, that they can take their, their child to a private school um, to get them out of that dangerous environment. So the idea that we would put children at risk is a disgusting comment and totally unacceptable and untrue. The reality is what we are saying is, is that when it comes to complicated topics, parents get to decide it's not appropriate. Look, we would all be outraged if our five-year-olds walked into class and they said, hey, we're going to talk about sex today. That all of us would agree that's not age appropriate. So, you know, we're living in this time where, you know, these individuals on Twitter or in the White House press room think that age appropriate is something that doesn't exist and that they get to decide what they show our children and when they get to show it. And the reality is the vast majority of parents don't feel that way. Floridians don't feel that way. This bill isn't controversial. It's only being made controversial by by radicals on Twitter. Now, Chris, I think one of my favorite things about the left wing arguments on this, you see this in Greg Sargent's piece on this in The Washington Post. They're constantly making two simultaneously and mutually exclusive arguments. One, one, one argument is, this isn't being taught in schools at all. What are you worried about? Nothing, none, this isn't happening. It's, it's, it's all a myth. It's all in your imagination. And the second is, it absolutely has to happen in schools. And if it doesn't happen in schools, young people will die. <laughs> they, they make these arguments at the exact same time without batting an eye. So let's start with the first one. What is the evidence that we're actually seeing indoctrination with regard to gender ideology or sexual orientation talk uh, for very young people? You know, we, we had a parent come and testify specifically about this issue to talk about how the school had talked to her child about having a transition plan and that they actually have a form, Ben. There's a form and it says here, check this box to say you're not going to tell the parents about it. And they didn't tell this mother. This mother had no idea that her daughter was having these issues, which means she couldn't do what she wanted to do to, to take care of her daughter, to help her daughter, to talk to her daughter, all the things that parents want to do to love and protect their children, she was unable to do because it was stolen from her by, by a school district, by, a, by a, a, a guidance counselor. And that's happening. And what's, what's not being discussed in the bill is that you know, the, there has to be radical transparency about what kids are learning at school, what they're being taught. You are not allowed to hide information from a parent. And there's even a line in there, which we shouldn't have to say because it's already Florida law, if a parent is breaking the law and abusing their child or neglecting their child, they are mandatorily uh, obligated to report that to law enforcement. But you can't just decide otherwise that you're going to hide information from parents. So this bill makes sure that that can't happen and that parents are empowered. But we have a number of parents who've had this experience and, and the rec- those part of the records have been kept from them. That is wrong. Parents are in charge of taking care of their kids. So, Chris, I also wanted to ask you about another bill that, of course, the left is very hot and bothered about. And that, of course, is the Florida HB5 and SB146, which is the Florida ban on abortion beyond 15 weeks. It's modeled on the Mississippi ban. So I assume that the 15 week restriction came from the basic assumption by by the Florida legislature that the Supreme Court is going to uphold the Mississippi law. Uh, And so you may as well start 
with a law that you know is going to clear whatever is the Supreme Court hurdle here. That, that is 100% accurate. Thank you for characterizing that way. But look, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, we, we've lived through years and years in the legislature where you know, pro-life bills have been immediately struck down by the federal court. You know, we believe the Mississippi case, you know, the Dobbs case that's currently in front of the court that will give the, the court the opportunity to uh, protect life at 15 weeks will, will be upheld by the court. And we want to be, you know, in line then that when we pass our bill, we get it to Governor DeSantis for his signature, that, you know, if they, if they do what we think that they'll do and uphold that case, that that we'll be right behind them and be able to protect lives at the 15-week mark. Well, the, the Florida legislature is doing extraordinary work. Governor DeSantis is doing extraordinary work. And so is Chris Sprouls, the Speaker of the Florida House of Representatives. Chris, thanks for doing the hard work of protecting our kids and protecting the unborn. Honestly, I'm so happy to be living in this state, dude. I cannot even tell you. <laughs> Appreciate your time. Well, we're happy to have you. Thanks a lot, Ben.